And here is White D. We are live on Channel 4, just a stone's throw from James Turner Street. I'll ask Dee about that point in a moment, about how someone who says they've not been able to work for six years could hold down a job as an MP. Uh, but we'll talk to White D. We have here as well lots of the residents of James Turner Street. We have locals to Birmingham, taxpayers, as well as programme makers from Channel 4 and the TV production company that made Benefit Street. We have columnists from across the political spectrum, from left and right. We have uh, entrepreneurs, we have a government minister and his opposite number here as well. This will be, I suspect, uh, quite a passionate and a rowdy debate here live on Channel 4 tonight, so expect some strong language. So, let's start. Let's start with you, uh, White D. Let's just pick up on that point. D. Um, all right, I'll just call you D. Okay. All right, D. <laughs> um, you do say at the end of that, you, it is true that you've been... You say that you have not been able to work for six years. I haven't said that I've not been able to work for six years, no. The past two years, since my mum passed away, yeah. I've, been, I've been suffering from depression. And do you now believe that you could hold down a job? When you were saying that you would like to be an MP, was that sincere? No, it wasn't. I mean, who'd want, <laughs> no, who'd want to be an MP? <laughs> do MPs actually work? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll come back to you in a second. D D Alison Pearson um, from The Telegraph. Uh, you wrote an article, all of you guys here have written different articles, as so many people have, uh, about Benefit Street. You wrote an article in which you were critical uh, of D. Alison, what was your point? Well, I'd like to say, first of all, that I think the Conservative front bench is very much looking for a lot more women, Dee, so I think you could perhaps <laughs> revise, because Dee's coming very much into line on Conservative thinking on um, benefits, I think. Um, I was making many points. One point was that I didn't think the, the, the residents of Benefit Streets were claiming anything more or worse than the bankers who were awarding themselves bonuses. Um, one point. Yes. point two was that you said that you'd been on disability allowance for depression. Now, when I look at the woman on the screen, a one-woman citizens' advice bureau, full of energy, laughter and so on, I don't see the classic symptoms of clinical depression. To be honest. So are you sorry? Are you saying that she's gaming the system? Uh, are you saying she's lying? Uh, I was just a bit surprised, and I do know yeah. that when they've just got people yeah. off disability living allowance onto the new yeah. allowance, it's a fact, Richard, that 878,000 yeah. people who are claiming the benefit have not okay. reapplied. For what it. are you saying about D? Just be clear with me. What are you saying about D? I'm just saying that a lot of people watching the programme were very, would have been very surprised to think that was a person suffering from depression. D, to there be might, D, there, well, D, there might be a point here, which is we watch you on that show and you are full of energy and you're this, yep. this mother to the street and you look after people and there's that moving scene where fungi wanted to meet his son and you washed his clothes and you woke him up at 8.30 in the morning. Yeah. You have a lot of energy and I guess some people will look at that and say, she can work. Why isn't she working? They would. I totally agree with you, but obviously yeah. that is little snippets. It's not me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. OK, OK. Uh, Douglas Murray um, from The Spectator. Uh, do you <coughs> think, in general terms, when I mean, Alison is alluding there, I think, to, to people gaming the system, when we look at why people are on benefits long-term, why they're long-term unemployed, this is a point that actually Dee was also making at the end of that film, that we saw there. She was saying it's the government's fault. Mm. Is it the government's fault or is it down to individuals well, who, are, who, are, who are milking it? I'd say quite clearly a, a bit of both. It, there's, yeah. It's undeniable, I, I think, and, and uh, Dee made this point in Spectator yeah. last week in her diary, that, okay. uh, that there is a, a problem in the system which she is caught in, a number of people are caught in, a large number of people in this country. Uh, the benefit system is such that, it, that it, they would actually be penalised if they began to work. They would be paying tax effectively for the first thousands of earnings at 90 plus percent because they would be losing out from work. And they have realised, as have a lot of other people, that it is better for them not to work than to work. And that is a serious problem in okay. the system, which I think everyone from every political side recognises okay. should be addressed. And what is your feeling about some of the... One other quick thing, which is that the personal responsibility thing is obviously part of it as okay. well. Well, on that point, here's a quote from you. This 
this is you, Douglas Murray, spectator. It is not just irresponsible, but deeply irresponsible to bring a child into the world if you do not have the means to support that child, let alone no intention of obtaining such means. Yes, I think a lot of people in this country who are working and are paying taxes and worry very much about whether they can afford a first child, a second child, let alone a third child, would be looking at people on this program and thinking, why are people who are paying nothing into the system not apparently having any of those concerns? Are there people from the show, from, from Benefit Street, people here who you think should not have had those children? I wouldn't say that. That's not my face to judge. Which is That's probably not, a good I, thing. I, I, I'm not going to say... Bring, you know, I'm not going to judge anything, good thing, but I would just... Well, someone over there, just hang on, someone over there just said it sounds like you are. Yes. You said that point... Well, you're you're no, so, hang on, hang on, wait a minute. Bring but the microphone in. Say that, say that, Douglas, say that again. It sounds like you are saying that. Are we in China or something? You're look. condescending people over there. You're saying she's on a programme and she doesn't look depressed. Maybe that's her way of coping. I didn't say that. No, I'm talking to the lady there. You're clearly the condescending side of this audience. OK, and let's just say one in five British children grows up in a home where nobody is working. That's almost two million kids. It is very difficult for those children to escape poverty without positive role models in their in their lives. That is just... Just because you're, you're, you're all facts and figures. You're, 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 you're all facts and figures. Model, that's They're just all stupid. facts and figures, you guys are. Well, well, can I, can I, can okay, let me, wait, let's bring some more people. This is uh, Mehdi Hassan of the, uh, the Huffington Post. Mehdi? I just want to inject some uh, facts and figures uh, against Alison and Douglas just to balance it out. I mean, look, let's be very clear. The majority uh, of children in this country living in poverty live in working households, not in work-less households. <laughs> Low pay is the biggest driver of poverty in this country. And and so good, we'd be clear. And just I'm clear, clear, on, that, I'm I'm clear on your point. Most people living in technical poverty yeah. are working. Yes, yeah, 6.7 million right? households versus 6.3 million. Is that, Alison, is that true? Wait, wait, Alison. Puzzle face there. Is that I know, true? I know that 20% uh, of people uh, claiming benefits are in work. Just on, on, on the back. Just wait, on that. Wait, 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 let, let me finish. finish. Let let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. The other issue okay, is this. Work. The other issue is this. Look, with the greatest respect to Channel 4 and my fellow journalists, the reason why people say 27% of the benefits budget goes in fraud when in actual fact the government's own figure says it's 0.8% is because we obsess over the subject. You kicked off the programme talking about fraud. Actually, 99% of the benefit budget does it is not fraudulently claimed. We lose far more to illegal tax events. I think it's actually 0.7%. Yeah, Owen? First, I have to correct Alison. And this I'm is Owen Jones, by the way, from so the Independent. I'm surprised yeah. Alison has yeah. made her claim. I've got an article Alison wrote here. It was called Mick Fullpot, yeah. A Good Reason to Cut Benefits. I'll leave aside the fact you used a man who killed yeah. his six kids to make a political point about the welfare state. Wow, but you, the well, well, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. A lot of people... Oh. Did that also, that tragic, terrible incident, did, did spark a debate. Much, there was nothing wrong with talking about it's, that it's, when that subject was in the news. It says as much it, about benefit claimants as it, Harold Shipman tells us about doctors. But it, the, the key it, point is, the claim she's made it, about 878,000 individuals claiming your capacity benefit, uh, the Telegraph themselves, her own paper, had to issue a correction because she got it wrong. Oh, and actually, these yes. were new claimants. Now, the point made is... Oh, do you know what? We, mu no, we must let Alison respond. Well, Alison Pearson. Good dude, because here's yeah. the correction. I've got it here. I've never stolen £13,000 from my employer. <laughs> OK, well, you're not so, making a point uh, there. But in yeah. terms of the key point about the, the welfare state, mm -hmm. we've got to get the facts here. The majority yeah. of the welfare state goes on pensioners who pay in all their lives, yeah. who, in many cases, still shiver in their homes be because <laughs> they still live in poverty. The majority of people, as Medi says, who, of a working age, depend on the welfare state okay. because they're not being paid well, what properly. About, what, about about the, the, what about the fact that we have a reality that wherever you go in Britain, there are people being destroyed yeah. by the social security system. It does not benefit the people who are on benefit. And that is the way that we should judge it. What we should be doing is investing in Becky yes. and in Mark. And Charles yeah. Because... Yes. The longer that Mark and Becky are in social security, the less chance their children and themselves <coughs> will yeah. ever have social mobility. Okay. All right. well, and that is the real problem. We don't have social mobility for people on benefit, and that is the yeah. biggest piece of crime. Okay. And it was invented in order to get people out of benefit. OK, John, let me tell you something. That's John Bird, by the way, yeah. the, uh, the founder of The Big Issue. Yeah. It's worth qualifying that by saying that you yourself spent some time on the streets, that you have spent time on welfare as well. But you can't just remove welfare. Mark and Becky have children to feed. You can't just come take on, welfare on. away. The amount of money, it, the amount of money that's been spent on Becky 
And, what, are you proposing you just take the money no, no, away? No, well, no, 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 no. Well, listen, why don't you listen? I'm saying <laughs> that the money that's been spent on Becky and Mark is not enough to get them out of the sticky stuff. So therefore, you have to invest an enormous amount of money. The other thing is, if I give, okay, okay, if I give, if I give one pound to Becky, it costs me five pounds to deliver it, because John. the real costs in bot, in welfare don't go okay. to the John, poor. John, John, we'll come to you later. Let's just come over to uh, to our politicians. Um, Chris Bryant, welcome to you. Good evening, Labour. Uh, Shadow Minister in the Department for Work and Pensions, and Mike Penning is here as well, uh, Government Minister. Mike, just, I mean, there's already a lot to respond to there. I just want to pick up on something that Dee said at the end of the film, which is that it's kind of the government's fault. It's the government's fault that she's on benefits. It's the government's fault no, no, no. that people are on... Well, that with you were more or less... Yeah, it's a system. So basically, yeah. I don't create the benefit system. It's the government. They say how much I should get, how much you should get, how much child benefit you get. Not me. I don't go down to my local MP and say, yeah. give me this much of money a week. Yeah. They, the, the actual government is the one that sets the precedence for how much people receive. So uh, it is the government's fault. OK. Mike? I think you're absolutely right, Dick. I am. Um, Thank because you, the government set the benefits. It's supposed to be, as John said, a safety net for people. Shouldn't be a way of life. And we should help individual people get in, into jobs. We can't treat everybody exactly the same. Yeah. But it is enormously difficult when you have you know, over you know, two million people oh, yeah. that are unemployed. But the bit that really upset me, mostly when I came into this job, is that people were being written off. People like me, when I, you know, when I came out of the fire service and get, didn't have a job and I was unemployed, someone said, yeah, do MPs have jobs? Yes, we do, fella. No, and some of us no, have had yeah, proper, no, proper jobs. Work, yeah, well, I mean, you measure your work in one way or another. Do you, do you, well, I, I think you're absolutely <laughs> right. If we, if we write people off, we write off a whole Who's community. Who's written off? Do you, do, do you, sorry, Mike, do you feel that any of these people here who we have got to know on Benefit Street, do you see them as written off? I, I, I think, I think the system, the system that was allow, allowing people to be written off and for their aspirations, their dreams, for their children and their young people, mm. was being destroyed. And that is a welfare system that John absolutely touched yeah. on there. And when someone said they all need jobs, yes, they've yeah. got to have an education, they've got to have training, they've got to get... That's the okay. job of a government, and, not just giving that, the money out okay, there right, nearly every time. Chris Brighton, is that a legacy? of the Labour government, of New, of new Labour. 97... Yes, yes, well, there's a lot of sympathy yes. over here already on this front row, but... Well, the, the second row. Wait, Richard. Well, let's... No, wait, OK, no, Chris, we'll come to you. 97 to, to 2010, the welfare well, bill... Oh, we'll come to you, John, thank you. So the welfare... The welfare the bill system. grew... John, please. The welfare grew, uh, bill grew by 62%. Is it a legacy? When we left power, Labour. there were half a million fewer people unemployed than there were when we came the to power. The wealth had even after the there, were, there were half right. a million yeah. fewer, and that's even after the massive worldwide economic crunch. But look, let me be yeah. absolutely clear. I think the best route out of poverty is a job. A job. Yeah. And that means you've got, to make, you've got to look at that nearly one million young people under the age of 24 who haven't got a job today. I'm not saying it was all perfect when Labour was in government either. No. But Do you have remorse, but about, that? You have remorse about that? About the amount that Labour spent on welfare, that 62% increase? Do you regret well, it at all? Uh, look, uh, was it what, a mistake? What I want to make sure is that people no, get what, jobs and when we, when we were do, in was government... Was it a mistake? Look, you're trying to set an argument in a way that you've got in your head. It's but what I'm trying, I look, I look at the people in my constituency, where, which has <coughs> one, historically one of the highest levels of deprivation of poverty in this yeah. country, large number of people on benefits, and it's a really difficult conundrum for a lot of them because many yeah. of them own their own homes. They want okay. to get in a job. And, and what let I would say about the programme... Let me bring it... Uh, hang on. Let me, no, no, I want to say something about the programme uh, because what, yeah. what I thought was very unrepresentative... There are 99 houses in that street. According yeah, to the figures on, on yeah. pensions, 50 of them would be pensioners. Yeah. We didn't see them in the programme. Okay. The whole of the first... The whole of the first... The we were, here's what My experience of people who are on benefits, the vast majority yeah. in this country is that they are not shoplifters, they are people who want a job. And yeah. they need, like yeah. Mark and Becky, they need support yes. to be able to get first a job. Of all, first of all, most people in the programme clearly did want a job, so it was representative in that we, sense. No, because but we, will, we haven't we will, seen those people in the uh, street, have we? We will come... Do you know what, in, the, in the next part of the programme, we're going to talk about reaction to the show itself. I just want to... Come, this is Charlie Mullins, who founded Pimlico Plumbers... Multi-millionaire child. Right, you're missing the Good point. Evening. You're, you're missing the point yeah. here. There's obviously a big issue here with these people finding work, and they need help to find yeah. work. 
we need to make the benefits less attractive and make work more attractive. Yeah. These people clearly want work. And that's why we introduced the national minimum wage. Oh. Well, that's the not national minimum wage. That. And of course, we need to get that just, up. Just Wait, the other people who are missing from the programme just, are the employers who don't your, pay enough to get point. people into There's jobs. There's really problems with people unemployed all over the country. And it was set up by the Labour government that fucked things up in the first place for these Sorry. people. No, no. So, what I'm saying is, so, what I'm saying is, so what I'm saying is why, don't, why don't we concentrate on trying to resolve the problem rather than harping on about all what's caused the problem? Okay. Uh, we will, we will, we will explore that point further. Uh, I did warn you that there might be some uh, fruity language during the show. <laughs> Good on and, uh, it. <laughs> so it came to pass. Um, we're going to take a break. We will return uh, when we do. We're going to look, as I said a moment ago, uh, more at the reaction to the television programme itself to Benefit Street. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Benefits Britain live here on Channel 4. We are just a stone's throw from James Turner Street. We have lots of the residents of James Turner Street here, locals in Birmingham, taxpayers, programme makers, columnists, uh, a government minister and his opposite number as well. And uh, for the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the reaction to Benefit Street, the reaction it has generated. Uh, and as well as talk about it, let's actually have a look at some of that reaction to Benefit Street. The time now, 11 minutes to 8. James Turner Street in Birmingham is now known across the country as Benefit Street. That's thanks to the Channel 4 series focusing on its residents, 90% of whom claim one or more benefits. James Turner Street is just a run-down road. Benefit Street. Benefit Street. Benefit Street. Not sure if the uh, Prime Minister is a follower of Benefit Street. Have you been following the documentary Benefit Street? I've only managed to catch a, a small amount of this uh, programme. Have you seen Channel 4's programme Benefit Street, accused of stigmatising the poor? Never worked in my life. Top story or two, the controversy over the Channel 4 programme Benefit Street. No matter what life brings to you, no matter what life throws at you, you've got to keep your head high. It's about time we like, take a step in our shoe and see how it is living on Benefit Street. <laughs> Is Benefit Street an example of broken Britain? I am the mum of the street. I can knock any door and ask him for a meal. I'll give everything, whatever I got, I'll give him. Channel 4 says Benefit Street is about community spirit in adverse circumstances. But the problem is it's not called community spirit in adverse circumstances, it's called Benefit Street. I'm going to get you 50 people. Nah, nah, no, that's on me, that is. A lot of people slapping me in the street, people saying that I'm an inspiration. <laughs> Well, the programme has even been discussed in the Commons this week with the Work and Pensions Secretary, Ian Duncan-Smith. Get more people back to work to end these abuses. The villain of the piece isn't the people, the villain is the system. Many people in our country have multiple disadvantages and problems where you need help to help to get people out of uh, that poverty and benefit dependencies. The says more CV, not many qualifications. Thousands and thousands of people done. getting laid off work. What chance for God? Just get a job. Even if you don't like it or anything. Most working age people dependent on benefits are people who are in work. We either live to work or work to live on the latter. Sometimes some people just need that kick up the backside. Why can't we talk about that? Why is a programme that highlights that being accused of demonising them? Too long we let these problems be ghettoised. You hear somebody who had their benefit stats, that is the only thing they rely on. If they haven't got that, what do they do? By the programme getting made, yeah. you're opening up debate, and debate yeah. can only be a good thing. What else can I do to make it better? And you can also join in the conversation as well on Twitter using the hashtag BenefitsBritain. So let's talk a bit about that reaction. Let's just go to, to White D to D for a moment. What did you make of the reaction to the programme? I couldn't actually believe how, how big it had become and how much, you know, it opened like a great big can of worms, basically. Yeah. How's the reaction been to you on the, in the street itself, from people in other streets? What's the reaction been to you since the show went out? Ninety percent of the time, it, it's been positive, you know, but it's just, it's just silly, isn't it? It's like people knocking your doors, like between 50 and, this is no word of a lie, 50 and 100 times a day. Is that true? 
Yes, it Between is true. Between 50 and 100 times a day, people come knocking on your door. Yeah. What, asking yeah. for autographs? Autographs, yes. pictures, a cup of tea. Yes. Uh, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like mad. I mean, but it's like one of them. It's like you know, like obviously, like Romeo Dunn from what's his name? What's that thing? Twenty one seconds to go and stuff like that. You know, I'm like, I like, uh, what's he, he knows my name. I know, no. And uh, it's nice to see Titchy. We'll come to you in a minute and talk to you as well, Titch. Let me ask. Chris Bryant is here, uh, shadow minister from the Department of Work and Pensions, Labour MP. Um, I know you saw a few episodes of the show. I wondered, um, what was your feeling about it? What was your reaction? What was your emotional reaction to the show, watching it? Well, I watched three episodes this morning. I hadn't watched it before. <coughs> Nobody had mentioned it to me in my constituency at all, ever. Um, but the, the feeling I felt this morning was actually really, really angry. I felt angry partly with the programme makers because the first episode focused entirely, so far as I could see, on drug taking and on shoplifting. And to be, to be honest, it seemed to me aiding and abetting shoplifting. Yeah. And that is just not my experience. Were they not of just showing a story? Live... Weren't they just showing a story on no, television? Well, I think it was much worse than that. Dude. Much worse than that. And, 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 and then the second Dude. one was all about Romanian and Bulgarians. Dude. And actually what I wanted to say is, why are we allowing some shoddy employer to employ people in that way in this country when they are completely and utterly vulnerable and um, they, they ended up having their next door neighbour, a British person, cooking food for them. And, and I just thought, we, there's so much we need to change in this country so that if you work, it pays to work. Yeah. That you're better off always. And that means an end to, to shoddy um, employers getting away okay. with it. It, it. it means changing lots of the rules about, around how the benefit system works. Uh, and, it, and, yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't know, there was a lady up there. Of course it means dealing with tax evasion. But I thought to myself, if you went to the richest street in this country, which I think is Bishop's Row in Hampstead, Not one and, there, and there's 19, uh, where there's 99 houses, hmm. you would find that they'd have exactly the same number of people who are drug addicts, alcoholics, and have all the same Do you really um, believe problems. that? You, you, you really believe so. that? Yes. <laughs> and some of Charlie Ryan. Well, that's an assumption you're just coming out with. Can read you come read out the with? Guardian and the Observer. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Read, you can't, you've got to believe yeah. everything in the newspaper. You can't believe things like that. You can't believe everything you see on Channel well, 4. Let's right? well, well, let's talk. 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 Well,
okay. life is testament yeah. to the fact that that's not entirely true. And very quickly, Richard McCarroll, you run the company that made the show. You wanted to come in there? Yeah, I mean, I actually think we should be very proud of the series. I mean, yeah. we, you know, Channel 4, <laughs> Channel 4, which was set up as a public service broadcast and has been criticised for not doing serious issues. Um, it's done a serious documentary series. We're here live tonight, and lots of people are watching it, and young people are watching it. Supposedly, okay. you don't care about Just political and serious issues. And, and, so. and on that point, on the serious issues and, and, and the politics <coughs> of it, has the reaction to this show kind of changed the game at all? I mean, do you think, will this have an impact uh, on policy, ultimately? Has it changed the public's attitude towards benefits and to welfare? Has it had, a, for one of the better phrase, a real-world impact, I mean, indeed, got a smack on. Yeah. Yeah. Has there been a debate about this now? Yes, you have. You succeeded in getting a debate. I, I, I think you should have not called it benefits, you should have called it community you. street, exactly. whatever you, you want to call it. But you particularly no went down an avenue of the, benef benefit. of the benefit side. As it moved on, you then stigmatised the whole group of people, I, I, I think, which was fundamentally it... wrong. Mike, but, Mike, answer my question. But, 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 but 90% of the people who reacted you know, positively. I mean, yeah, I don't oh, know figures, do I? But at the end of the day, in. you spent 18 months up to two years, you filmed people that were working, you filmed old age pensioners, you came to parties, filmed open days, community spirit, Bang! Two weeks, Benefit Street, okay. five of them. I think there are two uh, things that it has changed the debate about. Yes, go on. Actually, the, the first is, is the point about if you've not got the basic skills you need to be able to get in a job, the state should help you get them. I mean, you should have got them through school, of course. We did. Some, we I'm, 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 not saying, I'm not saying you particularly. I, I think we, we, we should be trying to make sure that, ev that nobody... We, sorry, Lake, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Department of Work yes. and Pension. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Wait, wait, wait. All right, all right. I'm trying to. I think you and I would agree on this point. Is the point I'm trying to make, which is that you actually have to make sure that people can read and write, that they're able to, that they're able to do the basics. We will, we will come to you. We will come to you. If everyone shouts at once, we can't hear anyone. Let's just come over here. No, John, wait, John, please wait. Mehdi Hassan. Just on this political point, yeah. has it changed the game at all? Has it changed the debate? I think in the it's country? made it much harder uh, yeah. for people to try and tell the truth about what's happening uh, to yeah. people on benefits. There are half a million yeah. people in this country, the sixth richest country in the world, going to food banks to get food because of benefit yeah. changes that have come in over the last few years. And I'm yeah. delighted to hear Mike Penning uh, make some very good points about yeah. people being stigmatised. But unfortunately, yeah. too many of his colleagues in government I... do similar stigmatisation. Let me say this, by the way. People on... According to our numbers. It's 350,000 people who use food banks last year. Well, according year, to, to Trussell Trust, it's half a million. They're the biggest food bank in the country. Do Douglas but Murray, I... but how many? Hang on, Douglas sure. Murray, uh, of the Spectator. Just tell me this: What did it teach you? What did? What's your reaction to the show? What did Benefit Street teach you? Well, it doesn't ma much matter what my own, what it taught me or didn't teach me. I would think for the most people in this country it was very shocking. It's why there's been a reaction. It's why it's appropriate to have a reaction and debate about it. A lot of people in this country have been, I think, genuinely shocked to discover that, that what used to be a working class has in some parts of the country disappeared and that we now have a form of underclass in that doesn't work. Out of and nine the fact nine. is that you do need human faces on that and that's one of the reasons why this show has become so popular. Did it's you put did a you, human face to that. Did you like the people on Benefit Street. I, yeah, no, I mean, it doesn't matter whether I like them or not. I think most well, it's an people. Important question. Look, how did you I, react to them as, <coughs> as human beings? I think in the how same did you way, react most, to people, most people, I think, would have had a pretty similar reaction, which is a, 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 a to, um, almost all of the people in it come across in the end as very likable for all sorts of ways, but. There are also other emotions along with it. Of course, most people, I think, watching it would think how tragic it is, frankly, that there are people in this country who live such, frankly, hopeless lives. And they, they seem to be, in many cases, lives genuinely without hope. And I think that can change. I think it should be beyond a political discussion as to how it should change. We should start by recognising it has to change. It has to change. In the House of Commons, because I don't see anybody that looks like me in there, and I watch it every day. And it's the same rich Tory boys with a military background, all related to the royal okay. family, and all their friends. I don't know if you well, like heard me talk, girl, but I didn't go to any top school. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we can come back. So you and me might speak alike, but I didn't. I went to the army at 16 because I couldn't I, get I a job. I read where you went. So I, I, I'm a bit I read different upon you some today of the on Wikipedia. No okay. But at the end of the day, they're not bad Thank people. You. They're just trying to do a decent job for everybody. And they're uh, exactly the same on Chris's benches. But you're not they doing a okay, job okay, okay, okay. We were, we were, we were going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk a bit more about how representative parliament is. You know you want to pick up on that point as well. We've got a lot more to talk about. 
on the show tonight. You can join in on our hashtag as well. Uh, we are live on Channel 4. We'll take another break. Uh, when we come back from this break, we're going to look a bit more, uh, move on from the reaction and talk a bit about how you can get people from benefits and into work. Uh, join us in a few minutes. Welcome back to Benefits Britain. We are live in Birmingham on Channel 4, which is a stone's throw from James Turner Street. Uh, we said it would be quite a rowdy debate. Uh, it certainly has been. We have people from uh, James Turner Street here with us tonight. We have programme makers, columnists from left and right, uh, a minister and his opposite number as well. Um, we've had a lot of people shouting out points. We haven't always been able to hear what everyone's been saying, so let's just take a few. Put your hand up if you'd like to say something, which I imagine is going to be uh, quite a lot of you. Indeed it is. Let's go to the... Yes, the gentleman there in the glasses. Tell us your name. Uh, Anthony Collins. OK, Anthony, what's your point? Uh, you say about increasing the minimum wage, but that is only going to harm the small businesses in this country, mm. the yeah. backbone of this country. What we need is to reduce the cost of living, which leads to another question. Why is this the only country in the world where diesel is more expensive than yeah. petrol, when diesel is yeah. the core Anthony, ingredient... Anthony, if I may say that's cost... slightly off topic. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's we, no, let, let's yeah. collate a few points. Uh, the, the latest figures over the weekend showed that 14,000 people might lose their job if, it, if uh, minimum wage went up to seven quid. But let's take a point from a gentleman here. I know you'd be keen to get in. Tell me your name. I'm Councillor Jamal Lal, yeah. the, the councillor for the ward where the James Turner Street uh, yes. was made. Yeah. What yeah. residents, uh, Chris has said the right thing, what are the residents who are not on benefits, the pensioners, the working people, why aren't they in the audience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only have the people here who took taken part in the, in the, in the programme. Okay. The, the rest of the street has been stigmatised, the area has represented been lost, People lost the, the, okay. the value in the property. Okay. So what I, I think Channel 4 and Love Productions or Apology to uh, my residents, but, uh, but, and they, they made a million of profit on this, on this, on this series, they need to put some money back to them and compensate by right. residents. OK. <laughs> we do have, we have a wide range of people in the audience. It's mostly people not from the show that are singing in the audience. A lot of these are people who are, uh, are local to Birmingham. Uh, gentlemen there, yes, hello, tell me your name. Hi, my name is Dotson. Hi, tell us your and, point, uh, My argument is, from the show, uh, a lot of the benefits go towards boozing and drinking and smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Why not give food stamps, something that will help them health-wise? You know, um, it just doesn't make sense giving the money out and all on drugs, all on alcohol. OK. So if you think... Did anyone think... Did anyone think, watching that show, did anyone at all think that life on benefits looked at all cushy? From what they saw. It looks great. It looks like a right bundle of laughs. Did it go on? Do you exp expand that point? That's how you think it, it came across. Like, well, of course it does. It looks like oh. we're having a great, you know, great uh. crack, doesn't it? You know what I'm uh. saying? But, oh, crack. Um, but obviously, uh. it's just a programme that's been put together into 40 minutes that they spent 18 months <laughs> filming. <laughs> you know, it's like... Did anyone, tell, but the old, did anyone think it looked cushy? Did anyone really no, think that? Richard, did anyone... Did anyone... Come over. No. Yes, yeah, 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 gentlemen there. Absolutely. My point is that if you don't put nothing in the system, right, yeah, you should have nothing out of it. Yeah. If you don't put nothing in the system, you should have no money, and that's it. OK. OK, yeah. all right. Uh, thank you very much. We'll come back to you guys a little bit later. Let's just focus on this point that I said we uh, discussed before the break, which is how you get people from benefits... Uh, Owen Jones is here from The Independent. How you get people off benefits and, and, and back into work. Because there seems to be a kind of common agreement that people do want to work and that a way out of this, a way out of poverty, uh, is through work. What is... Uh, what would be a solution well, to that? Well, firstly, let's make it clear, work does not pay in this country. We hear that as a mantra <laughs> when most people... Most people in poverty, they get up in the morning, morning and they earn their poverty. And if we're talking about people milking the system... Let me finish, Richard. If yeah. we talk about people milking the system, yeah. let's talk about the low-paying bosses who are being subsidised with in-work benefits because in the seventh richest country on earth, they won't pay properly. And if we're going to talk about getting people into jobs, because I actually think we need to talk about solutions here. Oh, what is the solution? What's the solution? Well, just quickly, oh, one in six workers in the last two years have claimed job seekers allowance at some point. That is a lack of security. 
What we need, firstly, is a massive house building programme that would reduce the amount we're spending on housing benefit, mm -hmm. which, by the way, is not going in the pockets of these tenants, it's lining the pockets of private landlords charging yep. rip off rent. Mm -hmm. But if we build housing, we would create jobs and we would stimulate the economy as well. It goes the same with a need in an industrial strategy, because what successive governments have done, and it started in the 80s, is let these secure jobs go to rot, if you like. Now, other countries like Germany, what they've done is they've had an industrial strategy. Instead of saying, oh, hands off, let the market decide, they've said, actually, we want to create jobs in renewable energy. Now, we've just seen these, the floods. We're going to see a lot more extreme weather. So let's have an industrial strategy to go and create renewable energy jobs, giving people secure, dignified jobs, taking on the environmental crisis, these are solutions, I know it's a bit crazy, isn't it, to talk about the welfare it's state not and not kick at people at the bottom. But that the is the only way we'll do it. And we've got to change a debate, which we have at the moment, where <coughs> those, the real villains of the piece, like the tax dodgers who get away with not paying £25 billion a year in tax, like the private landlords and the low-paying bosses milking our welfare state, like the bankers who plunged our country okay. into economic disaster, they get away with it, but all we ever hear about is kicking okay. people at the bottom. But no, but, 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 Are people who are, are not working when they probably could work and claiming money from the state, are they not also the villains of the piece? I think do the, they not fall into that category? The vast, majority, the vast majority of people, and I see these people every day, and I'm sure you see them as well, every single day, who are desperately looking for work that isn't there. For example, in Hall... There are a million and a half people in part-time yeah. work in this country who want to work full-time. We, we have to find a job. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Point. Yeah. John Bird. The real major point is, if you, look, if you have an education system that fails 20 to 30% of our citizens, yeah. how can they ever get educated? How can they ever get a job? Mark is talking about the fact he had a perforated eardrum. Why was there no extra support for him to lift him out of poverty? Because the predictable failure was he was going to end up in poverty. And so until we invest in our education system, where everybody going to school has the same opportunity as Mr Cameron and all those other people, until we do that... When I look at the benefits, okay, when I, look at the benefits when I see people who have not got a fair crack of the whip. Okay. And because they haven't, they start from behind and they stay behind. All right. One, uh, one of the things Chris, that, explain to you, Chris Bryant yeah. from Labour. What, one George. of the things that really struck me was that everybody who was trying to get a job was basically going for a zero hours contract and only earning on commission. And that's a really tough place to start in the workplace. And that's one of the things I really want to change in this country. Uh, one of the things we've done in Wales is the Labour government there has set up this future job fund, which means that every young person under 24 is guaranteed, if they're unemployed for a year, that they will have a job for six months. And that gets them started. And the miracle of it is 80% of those jobs are in private companies who wouldn't have employed somebody otherwise. How much would that cost? How much would that cost? Well, that much, sounds just, expensive, huh? And the best miracle of that is that 80% of those people, once they've done their six months, yeah. go on to a full-time job. That's what we should be doing across the whole that, of the country. Because we save money. Money. We save money. We save money because we okay. get people off <laughs> benefits into <laughs> jobs exactly. and they pay but taxes. My Penning. This government cancelled it. My Penning, my Penning, uh, from the government. Um, let me ask you Hopefully this. Let me ask, let me ask you this, which is that that point we just he heard there about... There are a lot of people, aren't there, who desperately want a job, and we've seen people in this programme, in Benefit Street, who really do want a job and can't get a job. I mean, we hear this language around benefits, about the shirkers and the skivers, and the implication is that if you cut benefits and these people who are sort of lazy, well, then they'll go and get a job. And yet the reality is that for a lot of people, they just can't get a job. Maybe they live in the wrong part of Britain, maybe they're the wrong age, maybe they're in their 50s and lost a job through the recession, but through no fault of their own. People, are you worried that you end up punishing people and taking money away from people who do desperately want a job, who are far from lazy and who are in no way shirkers? I, I listen yeah. very carefully to Shaz and very carefully what Dee said and there were lots of people and they're here this evening, a lot of them, that wanted to work yeah. and what need the help to get into work. But Dee actually said also there are people that were shirkers that were sitting yes. there and not working and they're the people where the benefits should, should be addressed and making sure that they do work. And it's may, they may not be the job. Wait a minute. It may not be the perfect job for them. 
may not be exactly what they want to do in life, but I've done plenty of jobs in my life, and so have a lot of people in this audience that have done jobs, that have done jobs, and are doing jobs today that need to actually go out to work. It may not be their perfect job, and someone in the Labour Party can shout us down, but it's not worth that, is it? Actually, what we need is people to go to work, small SMEs, people that are self-employed. That's okay. what will get the country back Let on me, its feet. Lady not the just back, it's, 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 it's very nice to hear from you. Just if you shout out, we can't tell what you're saying. Let's just bring in Titch here. I think everyone will know from the show. Uh, from Benefit Street. Um, you made a, there's a comment here. Welcome, very nice to see you, Titch. There's a, there's a comment that you made in the show, which I think was a, sort of one of the standout comments in the show, where you talked about how you talked about people in Africa. What was your line? Uh, my line was to say, you see, when you're in Africa, you don't, you've got to work, there's no benefit system. Yeah. Which is, if you don't work, you don't eat. That's basically. So when you come here, it's, I mean, it is good yeah. to have help. To, for you to go to work, which is, that's the system, I think. And you also said, you also said, there's a line you said in the show where you said that women, some women breed, and I think you might have been talking about people in the street, but you said that some women breed to get money from the state. You said uh, that. Do you, do you stand by that? I'll take that one back. Okay. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dee, sorry, come on, what's your, what's your thought on that? You know, it's I'll, I'll take that one back because I said some women breed. It, it was not... Some women do breed, that's a fact. Do, they yeah. do breed, that's a fact. We're doing that they, they, they tend to involve a man as well. Yeah, they involve a man as well, but the problem with, with, with the system, it pushed the men out of the woman. Because the women, when they live together with a man, what is happening is the woman hey, is Dee. going to... Not getting so enough anyway. benefits for anyway. himself, for herself. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, no, leave it. We need to take a little break here. D, yeah. we're going to come back in a second. No, I want to hear more from then. D in a second. Uh, and more from you guys. I know you got your hands up. I know you're desperate, so I will come to some of you, including you there, lady with the glasses. You look very passionate. We'll be with you in a second. Uh, we're going to take a break. We're live on Channel 4. You can add your comments to uh, hashtag Benefits Britain. And when we come back, we'll explore the various ways in which the government could actually cut uh, the benefits bill. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Back to Benefits Britain Live. We are live on Channel 4, where it's a stone's throw from uh, James Turner Street. Uh, we have lots of the residents of James Turner Street here tonight. We have uh, <laughs> still, what have you been playing? What, just? <laughs> um, but we, uh, we talked a lot tonight about the reaction to the show. Um, uh, we're going to talk here partly about how the benefits bill can come down. Mike Penning is with us, who is uh, a government minister in the department for work and pensions. Um, uh, Vincent Nichols, the head of the, the Catholic Church in England and Wales this weekend, was, was critical about the speed at which the benefits bill is being cut. Um, did, it, did that make you uncomfortable? No, it didn't, actually, and I don't agree with very much of what he said. Um, and, I, and I think it's really what he has to understand and what we all understand, have to understand, which is why it wasn't done by previous governments. If you're going to reform the benefit, benefit <coughs> system, it is very, very difficult. <coughs> And so, if you do that, you, you are going to upset people and you are going to do it. But it must be better to be in employment and to work than be on benefits if you can. Mm. And the, the, what we saw is, yes, as Chris was right, that we did see less people claiming unemployment benefit, but we saw a huge increase in people on DLA and other, and other sickness you, benefits. So let's see if we can work together to actually get more people into work. In terms of getting the benefits bill down, do you worry at all that you are disproportionately punishing younger people and poorer people. So if you take pensions, we know that if you take the whole of the social security spending, 53% mm. of that is on pensions. And that things like free TV licenses and bus passes are ring fenced, they are protected yeah. even for wealthy pensioners. Do you not, well, you have this phrase about we're all in it together. Mm. When you look at it that way, it doesn't feel like everyone is in it together. You can phrase it, it that way. But what, what we, we saw, and which is why we put the benefit cap in, is that I've got nurses and trainee firemen in my constituency earning less than what the benefit cap is, which is why we had to put a benefit cap in there. And why we had to say to, to people, we cannot just why continue not, to pay more and more and more. Why not cut benefits for rich pensioners? What's the reason Because they've that? paid in all their lives and but they've worked wealthy, damn hard but and they deserve it. <laughs> 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 okay, 
Maddy Hassan, Maddy Hassan of the Huffington Post. You talk about cutting benefits and you talk about how do we bring the bill down. Yeah. You've got a show called Benefits Britain, but it's all skewed towards money going towards the poorest people, people who are disabled. You know, a lot of us want to cut welfare. I want to cut welfare for rich people, for corporations. I want to cut the three billion pounds that goes to fossil fuel companies every year. Four billion pounds in subsidies to rail companies. Six billion pounds in PFI payments to private companies. We spent 1.1 trillion pounds bailing out the banks. You could pay JSA for 150 yeah. years. But Maddie, here's with the that point. Money. So but Maddie, that is the real welfare scandal. Now. And why don't, sorry, why don't, with the greatest respect to these nice people from James Tennis Street, I'd like to see some bank bosses and rail company bosses here telling us how they're spending my money on their bonuses. Okay, that's the welfare. But there is a point, but Maddie. You there's a point here. We'll there's a point. Just wait a minute. We'll there's a point here. For you guys on the Owen oh, as well. On the left, the issue here is that actually, when the you look at the polling numbers, when you look at public sentiment, there is a feeling that the benefits bill does need to come down. Of course well, it is, because of the misinformation. Right. Exactly. So they think 27% of the bill okay. is fraudulently claimed, it's less than 1%. Of course it's you're going to think that. If you're fed misinformation it, by the media, by yeah. ministers, you will believe these things. Well, if we're going to bring down social security spending, we need to deal with the underlying reasons it's going up, and that's yeah. to deal with the housing crisis, means the moment we spend £24 billion yeah. on housing benefit, as I say, that's going to these private landlords charging rip off okay, you made that point. It's okay. to do with low pay and it's to do with... Let me, here's what I want to do. I will come to you. Right. We only have, we have four minutes left here live on Channel 4. I want to get some quick points. I want to ask if you think... So I'll start with you, lady there, with the blonde hair there. Hello there. Do you think anything good, any good has come out of Benefit Street? I would say um, it definitely has. Um, coming from Birmingham, I think it's really unveiled the hidden poverty line that exists. Um, just over the road, there is a homeless shelter which feeds 150 people a day. And I think in middle-class Britain, we don't see those people. And it's actually, for better or worse, it's made us realise there are okay, people that thank live you. like that. Lady there in the glass, I said I'd come to you. Tell us, do you think any good has come out of Benefit Street? Yes, something good has come out. It's made people to know what Britain is really like. What I think they should do to cut the benefit down. They don't have to debate it. Like in other European countries, they don't debate, they just do it. Okay. They just do whatever they need to do. Lady here, lady here. I'd like to, bring, I'd like to bring it back again. You mentioned pensioners. I did. We went to work at 16 and we built, we paid tax for a brighter future. We married in the 60s, we were still saving for the brighter future. We had our own children, they went to work. Now, my husband still works at 70, we look after a great granddaughter uh, because of the childcare cost. Okay. And where's our brighter future? It's now for us. So please, don't attack anything right. for the pensioners. the pensioners. Thank alone. you. OK, it's a fair point. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Bryant. Quickly. I think, first of all, we, yeah. should, we should feel ashamed of a country where yeah. people in work have to go to food banks yeah. to put food on the table. Exactly. Uh, secondly, yeah. secondly yeah. I, think yeah. there, I think there are some things that we... There's one thing I would change about um, what pensioners get paid. I don't see why somebody who's on more than £150,000 a year okay. should receive the winter fuel allowance. Well, I, I would, I would change okay. that. Yeah. And, I would, and we, sorry, but I would make sure that anybody who is out of work for more than two years is guaranteed a job and they have to take it. Okay. Go so shout out. We can't tell what you're saying. Douglas Murray, the Spectator. Very quickly, Just any very good quick. come out of the streets? There's a lot of what ifs we can do, but the focus should be on the people who are in this program and the program. The, the question really for people is: How can the situation you, have, some of you, have found yourselves in, where it is it is worse paying to work than it is not to work? How can that change? And if that can be a debate we have properly and seriously and beyond party politics, then something very good has come out of this. And let me ask. You, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Let's hear. Just before we close the show tonight on Channel Four, let's just hear from the. Rest residents of James Turner Street. For you, do you, you did address this in the, in the film to some extent. What good do you think has come out of, of this show and taking part in the show? Well, obviously everyone is talking about it and hopefully the yeah. government will have a look and address things like for the kids coming up. They're the is next your daughter, generation. Caitlin? Yeah. It is my daughter, Caitlin. Uh, <laughs> Bad luck. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's... <laughs> They're the next generation. It has to be right for them. So the government really needs to clamp down now. Leave the old age pensions. That they've worked hard all their lives. Yeah. You know, sort it out. Hello, Dad. Mike, <laughs> you're ten seconds. I, I, complete, I completely yeah. agree. People that no, are, you, you're people not my dad. Work, but... no, 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 no. <laughs> I wish. I wish. And actually, I might have met your mum. But there we are. But at the end of the day, we've got to look after kids in the education system, and it has failed for years and years and years. Yeah. And that's what we've got to do. Yeah. It failed me when I was at school, so I'm dyslexic. So not now, Chris. But you were doing government for 13 years and did nothing about it. Leave that point, Paul. Well, I'll tell you some good as we have SB here, who you know from the show as well. 
Uh, Model SP, good to see you, SP. Some good has come for you. You've been signed by, I think, a couple of modelling agencies as well, haven't you? Yeah, I'm not working for that, the programme. Yeah, you were working. And she doesn't live on working. Jamestown and Street. And I don't. <laughs> so, there Listen, you go. That's it. Thank you very much for taking part. Yeah, that's it for most. This debate will continue probably forever. Uh, thank you for watching. Good night. And if you've been affected by any of the issues raised, support can be found at channel4.com slash benefit street. It's 8 out of 10 cats next. that looks like me in there and I watch it every day and it's the same rich Tory boys with a military background all related to the royal family and all their friends. I don't know if you well, well, heard me talk, girl, but I didn't go to any top school. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we can come back. Uh, you and me might speak alike, but I didn't. I went to the army at 16 because I couldn't I, get I a job. I read where you went. So I, I read upon you today on Wikipedia. Yeah. But you at the end from. of the day, they're not bad Thank people. They're just trying to do a decent job for everybody. And they're uh, exactly the same on Chris's benches. But you're not they doing a good job for us. We were, we were, we were going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk a bit more about how representative parliament is. You know you want to pick up on that point as well. We've got a lot more to talk about on the show tonight. You can join in on our hashtag as well. Uh, we are live on Channel 4. We'll take another break. Uh, when we come back from this break, we're going to look a bit more, uh, move on from the reaction and talk a bit about how you can get people from benefits and into work. Uh, join us in a few minutes. Welcome back to Benefits Britain. We are live in Birmingham on Channel 4, which is a stone's throw from James Turner Street. Uh, we said it would be quite a rowdy debate. Uh, it certainly has been. We have people from uh, James Turner Street here with us tonight. We have programme makers, columnists from left and right, uh, a minister and his opposite number as well. Um, we've had a lot of people shouting out points. We haven't always been able to hear what everyone's been saying, so let's just take a few. Put your hand up if you'd like to say something, which I imagine is going to be uh, quite a lot of you. Indeed it is. Let's go to the... Yes, the gentleman there in the glasses. Tell us your name. Uh, Anthony Collins. OK, Anthony, what's your point? Uh, say about increasing the minimum wage, but that is only going to harm the small businesses in this country, the backbone of this country. What we need is to reduce the cost of living, which leads to another question. Why is this the only country in the world where diesel is more expensive than yeah. petrol, when yeah. diesel is yeah. the core Anthony, ingredient... Anthony, if I may say something, that's slightly <laughs> off-topic. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but we, no, let, let's yeah, collate a few points. Uh, the, the late figures over the weekend showed that 14,000 people might lose their job if, it, if uh, minimum wage went up to seven quid. But let's take a point from a gentleman here. I know you'd be keen to get in. Tell me your name. I'm Councillor Chaman Lal, yeah. the, the councillor for the ward where James Turner Street uh, yes. was made. Yeah. Well, never said what yeah. residents, uh, Chris has said the right thing, what are the pe residents who are not on benefits, the pensioners, the working people, why aren't they in the audience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only have the people here who took taken part in the, in the, in the programme. Okay. The, the rest of the street have been signified. Okay which we have at the moment, where <coughs> those, the real villains of the piece, like the tax dodgers who get away with not paying £25 billion a year in tax, like the private landlords and the low-paying bosses milking our welfare state, like the bankers who plunged our country into economic disaster, they get away with it, but all we ever hear about is kicking okay. people at the bottom. But of the <laughs> Who are, are not working when they probably could work and claiming money from the state? Are they not also the villains of the piece? I think. Do the, they not fall into that category? The vast, well? majority, the vast majority of people, yeah. and I see these people yeah. every day, and uh, I'm sure you see them as well. 
every single day who are desperately looking for work that isn't there. For example, in there are in a million and a half people in part-time yeah. work in this country who want to work full-time. We have to find a job. Can't find a job. Okay, then we'll get to the major point. Here. John Bird. The real major point is if you look, if you have an education system that fails 20 to 30 percent of our citizens, yeah. how can they ever get educated? How can they ever get a job? Mark is talking about the fact he had a perforated eardrum. Why was there no extra support for him to lift him out of poverty? Because the predictable failure was he was going to end up in poverty. And so until we invest in our education system, where everybody going to school has the same opportunity as Mr Cameron and all those other people, until we do that... I see people who have not got a fair crack of the whip. Okay. And because they haven't, they start from behind and they stay behind. Chris Bryant yeah. from Labour. What, one George. of the things that really struck me was that everybody who was trying to get a job was basically going for a zero hours contract and only earning on commission. And that's a really tough place to start in the workplace. And that's one of the things I really want to change in this country. Uh, one of the things we've done in Wales is the Labour government there has set up this future job fund, which means that every young person under 24 is guaranteed, if they're unemployed for a year, that they will have a job for six months. And that gets them started. And the miracle of it is 80% of those jobs are in private companies who wouldn't have employed somebody otherwise. How much would that cost? How much would that cost? Does that sound expensive? Huh? And the best miracle of that is that 80% of those people, once they've done their six months, yeah. go on to a full-time job. That's what we should be doing okay, so across the whole that, of the country. Because we save that, money. We save money. We save money because we okay. get people off yeah. benefits yeah. into yeah. jobs exactly. and they pay yeah. taxes. Yeah. My Penning. This government cancelled it. My Penning, my Penning, uh, from the government. Um, let me just ask you this. Let me ask, let me ask you this, which is that that point we just he heard there about, there are a lot of people, aren't there, who desperately want a job, and we've seen people in this programme, in Benefit Street, who really do want a job and can't get a job. Always, and that means an end to, to shoddy um, employers getting away okay. with it. It, it. it means changing lots of the rules about, around how the benefit system works. Uh, and, it, and, yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't know, there was a lady up there. Of course it means dealing with tax evasion. But I thought to myself, if you went to the richest street in this country, which I think is Bishop's Row in Hampstead, Not one and, the, and, there's 19, uh, and where there's 99 houses, hmm. you would find that they'd have exactly the same number of people who are drug addicts, alcoholics, and have all the same problems. Do you really um, believe problems. that? You, you, absolutely you really believe that? You, yes. <laughs> <And some others. laughs> Charlie, that's an assumption you're just coming out with. Read, come read out the with? Guardian and the Observer. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, read, you can't, you can't long, believe yeah. everything in the newspaper. You can't believe things like that. You can't believe everything you see on Channel well, 4. Let's four well, let, well, let's 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 talk. Channel 4 to react. This is an important point. But Charlie, Charlie, I will right. come back Channel to you. Channel 4 are doing Ch a great job of exposing what's going on out there. Uh, so, exposing uh, what? Exposing what? How we look after There's each other? Uh, yeah, exposing what you well, mean. Well, what they say, by highlighting the, the problem that we have out there, hopefully it stops other people okay. wanting to be on benefits and get some into the world. Just stop, stop. Wait, 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 wait. Channel 4, we're going to come to Channel 4 in a second. Wait a minute, please. Well, that seems like that's quite a load of quite a pejorative word. What do you mean What do you mean exposing? It's what does that a, well, mean? it's a good thing that people are what aware of the problems that's what out there. What well, they've exposed the problem that's out there, the difficulty that people are having to get into a workplace. Okay. Assumptions, Tom, that assumption. Wait, wait. Multi it's quick for a multimillionaire to say that, isn't it? Yeah, because you, you've got your money, I'm you've not, got your big ass. With, with respect, but, but, with respect. Hey, hey, one at a time. With, with respect, right? You talk about multimillionaire, but it's called hard work, right? Oh, hard work. Come yeah. Here. Yeah. Hard work. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Charlie, Charlie, we'll come back to Charlie on this point. I need to just hear from Channel 4. I know you want to speak. We'll come to you in a second. Uh, Ralph Lee, uh, you are the executive at the, the channel at Channel 4 that oversaw this programme. Did you want to respond to what Chris said, particularly about that f the first yeah. episode of Benefits? I think um, yeah. there was some concern around the first episode about whether or not the series would stigmatise the mm. poor, and there were some accusations about that. But yeah. I think as the series has gone on, actually, people have really recognised that this is a kind of much broader portrait of a, of a street like James Turner Street, of a part of Britain where employment is very hard to find. You don't and think actually, it's, it's typical, do you? Do you think that's representative? Of I think there are streets benefits. like James Turner Street up and down the country, but we've never claimed... You're very selective in your cuts. You're very, very selective about what you did 
there. We've you never didn't planned. show the street at all. You picked on a certain group of people, yeah, yeah, said to them, we're going to do this. You didn't really tell them the full truth, I don't think, either, about what well, was going to go on. I deny that accusation. Well, you might can die in these lights, but you've only got to watch it. I did watch it, and Chris, I did watch it. And actually, I think you run out of ideas after about five minutes flat, and you can't just pick on these people. Well, okay. people let Ralph respond. Wait, 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 let Ralph respond. Ralph. I think that we're dealing with many businesses in this country, the backbone of this country. What we need is to reduce the cost of living, which leads to another question. Why is this the only country in the world where diesel is more expensive than yeah. petrol? When diesel is yeah. the core ingredient, and, uh, if I may say that's cost... slightly off topic. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's we, no, let, let's collate a few points. Uh, the the latest figures over the weekend showed that 14,000 people might lose their job if it, if uh, minimum wage went up to seven quid. But let's take a point from a gentleman here. I know you've been keen to get in. Tell me your name. I'm Councillor Chamon Lal, yeah. the the councillor for the ward where James Turner Street uh, yes. was made. Yeah. Well, you've never what yeah. residents, uh, Chris has said the right thing. What are the residents who are not on benefits? The pensioners, the working people. Why aren't they in the audience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only have the people here who took taken part in the in the in the program. The, the rest of the street has been stigmatised. The area has represented been lost. People lost the the, okay. the values in property. Okay. So what I, I think channel for and not production or apology to uh, my residents but, uh, but, and they they made a million of profit on this on this on the series. They need to put some money back to them and compensate by right. residents. Okay. We do have we have a wide range of people in the audience. It's mostly people not from the show that are seeing in the audience. A lot of these are people who are uh, are local to Birmingham. Uh, gentlemen there, yes. Hello, tell me your name. Hi, my name is Dotson. Hi, tell us your and, point. Uh, my argument is from the show, uh, a lot of the benefits go towards boozing and drinking and smoking cigarettes. Why not give food stamps? Something that will help them health wise. You know, um, it just doesn't make sense giving the money out and all on drugs, all on alcohol. Okay. So if you think did anyone think did anyone think watching that show, did anyone at all think that life on benefits looked at all cushy? From what they saw. It looks great. It looks like a right bundle of laughs. Did it go on? Do expand that point? That's how you think it, it came across? Like, well, of course it does. It looks like oh. we're having a great, you know, great <laughs> crack, doesn't it? You know what I'm saying? But, oh, crack. Um, but obviously, <laughs> it's just a programme that's been put together into 40 minutes that they spent 18 months <laughs> filming. <laughs> you know, it's like... Did anyone, tell them, but the old, did anyone think it looked cushy? Did anyone really no, think that? Richard, did anyone... Did anyone... Come over. No. Yes, yeah, 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 gentlemen there. Absolutely. My point is, if you don't put nothing in the system, right, yeah, you should have nothing out of it. Yeah. You don't put nothing in the system, you should have no money, and that's it. OK. OK, all yeah. right. Uh, thank well, you very much. We'll come back to you guys a little bit later. Let's just focus on this point that I said we uh, discussed before the break, which is how you get people from benefits. Uh, Owen Jones is here from The Independent. How you get people off benefits and, and, and back into work. Because there seems to be a kind of common agreement that people do want to work and that a way out of this, a way out of poverty, uh, is through work. What is, uh, what would be a solution well, to that? Well, firstly, like... On benefits, uh, Owen Jones is here from The Independent, how you get people off benefits and, and, and back into work. Because there seems to be a kind of common agreement that people do want to work and that a way out of this, a way out of poverty, uh, is through work. What is... Uh, what would be a solution well, to that? Well, firstly, let's make it clear, work does not pay in this country. We hear that as a mantra but when most people... <laughs> most people in poverty, they get up in the morning, morning and they earn their poverty. And if we're talking about people milking the system... Let me finish, Richard. If yeah. we talk about people milking the system, yeah. let's talk about the low-paying bosses who are being subsidised with in-work mm -hmm. benefits because in the seventh richest country on earth they won't pay properly. And if we're going to talk about getting people into jobs, because I actually think we need to talk about solutions here, Oh, what is the solution? What's the solution? Well, just quickly, well, one in six that, workers in the last two years yeah. have claimed job seekers allowance at some point. That is a lack of security. What we need, firstly, is a massive house building programme that would reduce the amount we're spending on housing benefit, which, by the way, is not going in the pockets of these tenants, it's lining the pockets of private landlords charging yeah. rip off rent. But if we build housing, we would create jobs and we would stimulate the economy as well. It goes the same with a need in an industrial strategy, because what successive governments have done, and it started in the 80s, is let these secure jobs go to rot, if you like. Now, other countries like Germany, what they've done is they've had an industrial strategy. Instead of saying, oh, hands off, let the market decide, they've said, actually, we want to create jobs in renewable energy. Now, we've just seen these, the floods. We're going to see a lot more extreme weather. 
So let's have an industrial strategy to go and create renewable energy jobs, giving people secure, dignified jobs, taking on the environmental crisis. These are solutions. I know it's a bit crazy, isn't it, to talk about the welfare state not and not kick all. people at the bottom. That is stock. the only way we'll do it. And we've got to change the debate, which we have at the moment, where <coughs> those, the real villains of the piece, like the tax dodgers who get away with not paying £25 billion a year in tax, like the private landlords and the low-paying bosses milking our welfare state, like the bankers who plunged our country into economic disaster, they get away with it, but all we ever hear about is kicking okay. people at the bottom. But no, but, 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 Are people who are, are not working when they probably could work and claiming money from the state, are they not also the villains of the piece? I think that the, they not fall into that category. The vast, majority, the vast majority of people, and I see these people every day, and I'm sure you see them as well, every single day, who are desperately looking for work that isn't there. For example, in there are in a million and a half few, people in part-time yeah. work in this country who want to You're work full-time. We have an job. Yeah. 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 Okay, then, okay. okay. Find the major work. point here. John Bird. The real major point is, if you, look, if you have an education system that fails 20 to 30% of our citizens, yeah. how can they ever get educated? How can they ever get a job? Mark is talking about the fact he had a perforated eardrum. Why was there no... First episode about whether or not the series would stigmatise the mm. poor, and there were some accusations about that. But yeah. I think as the series has gone on, actually, people have really recognised that this is a kind of much broader portrait of a, of a street like James Turner Street, of a part of Britain where employment is very hard to find. You don't actually, think it's, it's typical, typical to you? Do you think that's representative? Of I think there are people streets like James Turner Street up and down the country. You were very selective in your cuts. You were very, very selective about what you did there. We've you never didn't claimed. show the street at all. You picked on a certain group of people, yeah, yeah. said to them, we're going to do this. You didn't really tell them the full truth, I don't think, either, about what well, was going to go well, on. I deny you that Well, well might, I, you might indict on these right, but you've only got to watch it. I did watch it, and Chris, yeah. Yeah. I did watch it. And actually, I think you run out of ideas after about five minutes flat, and you can't just pick on these people. Well, okay. people let Ralph respond. Wait, let Ralph respond. I think the fact that and many other contributors contributors to the series are here and talking about the series and the positive effect that, they've, that, that it's had on them and the way that it's opened up the issues that they all face in their okay. life is testament mm. to the fact that that's not entirely true. And very quickly, Richard McCarroll, you run the company that made the show. You wanted to come in there? Yeah, I mean, I actually think we should be very proud of the series. I mean, with, you know, Channel 4, Channel 4, which was set up as a public service broadcast and has been criticised for not doing serious issues, um, it's done a serious documentary series. We're here live tonight, and lots of people are watching it, and young people are watching it. Supposedly, okay. you don't care about Just political and serious issues. And, and, so. and on that point, on the serious issues and, and, and the politics <coughs> of it, has the reaction to this show kind of changed the game at all? I mean, do you think, will this have an impact uh, on policy, ultimately? Has it changed the public's attitude towards benefits and to welfare? Has it had, a, for one of the better phrase, a real-world impact? I mean, indeed, got a smack on. Yeah. Yeah. Has there been a debate about this now? Yes, you have. You succeeded in getting a debate. I, I, I think you should have not called it benefits, you should have called it community you. street, exactly. whatever you're, you want to call it. But you particularly no went down an avenue of the, benef benefit. of the benefit side. As it moved on, you then stigmatised a whole group of people, I, I, I think, which was fundamentally it... wrong. Mark, but, Mark, answer my question. But, 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 but 90% of the people who reacted you know positively. I mean, yeah, I don't oh, know figures, do I? But at the end of the day, in. you spent 18 months up to two years, you filmed people that were working, you filmed old age pensioners, you came to parties, filmed open days, community spirit. Bang! Two weeks, Benefit Street, okay. five of them. I think there are two uh, things that it has changed the debate about. Yes, go on. Actually, the, the first is, is the point about if you've not got the basic skills you need to be able to get in a job, the state should help you get them. I mean, you should have got them through school, of course. We did. Some, we I'm, 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 not saying, I'm not saying you particularly. I, I think we, we, we should be trying to make sure that, ev that nobody... We, sorry, Lee, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Department of Work yes. and Pension. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Wait, wait. All right, all right. I'm trying to. I think you and I would agree on this point. Is the point I'm trying to make, which is that you actually have to make sure that people. Could... They're in their fifties and lost a job through the recession, but through no fault of their own. People, are you worried that you end up punishing people and taking money away from people who do desperately want a job, who are far from lazy and who are in no way shirkers? I, I listened very carefully to shows and very carefully what Dee said, and there were lots of people, and they're here this evening, a lot of them, 
that wanted to work yeah. and want, need the help to get into work. But they actually said also there are people that are shirkers that were sitting yes. there and not working. And they're the people where the benefits should, should be addressed and making sure that they do work. And it's may, they may not be the job. Wait a minute. It may not be the perfect job for them. May not be exactly what they want to do in life, but I've done plenty of jobs in my life, and so have a lot of people in this audience that have done jobs, that have done jobs, and are doing jobs today that need to actually go out to work. It may not be their perfect job, and someone in the Labour Party can shout us down, but it's not worth that, is it? Actually, what we need is people to go to work, small SMEs, people that are self-employed. That's okay. what will get the country back Let on me, its feet. Lady not just shout it's, it's, people down the it's very nice to hear from you. Just if you shout out, we can't tell what you're saying. Let's just bring in Titch here. I think everyone will know from the show. Uh, from Benefit Street. Um, you made a, there's a comment here. Welcome, very nice to see you, Titch. There's a, there's a comment that you made in the show, which I think was a, sort of one of the standout comments in the show, where you talked about how you talked about people in Africa. What was your line? Uh, my line was to say, you see, when you're in Africa, you don't, you've got to work, there's no benefit system. Yeah. Which is, if you don't work, you don't eat. That's basically. So when you come here, it's, I mean, it is good yeah. to have help. To, for you to go to work, which is, that's the system, I think. And you also said, you also said, there's a line you said in the show where you said that women, some women breed, and I think you might have been talking about people in the street, but you said that some women breed to get money from the state. You said uh, that. Do you, do you stand by that? I'll take that one back. Okay. Because... <laughs> oh, good. No. Oh, sorry. Well, you never know. You never know. Well, sorry. Come on. What's your, what's your thought on that? You know, it's I'll, I'll take that one back because I said some women breed. It, it was not... Some that... women do breed. That's a fact. Do, they yeah. do breed. That's a fact. We're doing that they, they, they tend to involve a man as well. Yeah, they involve a man as well. But the problem with, with, with the system, it pushed the men out of the woman. Because the women, when they live together with a man, what is happening is the hey, woman is Titch. going to not getting <laughs> enough benefits for anyway. himself, for herself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, leave there. We need to take a little break here. Dean, yeah. we're going to come back in a second. No, I want to hear more from Dean in a second. Uh, and more from you guys. I know you got your hands up. I know you're desperate. So I will come to some of you, including you there, lady with the glasses. You look very passionate. We'll be with you in a second. Uh, we're going to take a break. We're live on Channel 4. You can add your comments to uh, hashtag Benefits Britain. And when we come back, we'll explore the various ways in which the government could actually cut uh, the benefits bill. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> we, will, we will explore that point further. Uh, I did warn you that there might be some uh, fruity language during the show. Well, good on and, uh, it. <laughs> so it came to pass. Um, we're going to take a break. We will return uh, when we do. We're going to look, as I said a moment ago, uh, more at the reaction to the television programme itself, to Benefit Street. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. To Benefits Britain live here on Channel 4. We are just a stone's throw from James Turner Street. We have lots of the residents of James Turner Street here, locals in Birmingham, taxpayers, programme makers, columnists, uh, a government minister and his opposite number as well. And uh, for the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the reaction to Benefit Street, the reaction it has generated. Uh, and as well as talk about it, let's actually have a look at some of that reaction to Benefit Street. The time now, 11 minutes to 8. James Turner Street in Birmingham is now known across the country as Benefit Street. That's thanks to the Channel 4 series focusing on its residents, 90% of whom claim one or more benefits. James Turner Street is just a run-down road. Benefit Street. Benefit Street. Benefit Street. Not sure if the uh, Prime Minister is a follower of Benefit Street. Have you been following the documentary Benefit Street? I've only managed to catch a, a small amount of this uh, programme. Have you seen Channel 4's programme Benefit Street, accused of stigmatising the poor? Never worked in my life. Top story or two, the controversy over the Channel 4 programme Benefit Street. No matter what life brings to you, no matter what life throws at you, you've got to keep your head high. It's so about time we like, take a step in our shoe and see how it is living on Benefit Street. Is Benefit Street an example of broken Britain? I am the mum of the street. I can knock any door and ask him for a meal. I'll give you everything, whatever I got, I'll give him. 
Channel 4 says Benefit Street is about community spirit in adverse circumstances, but the problem is it's not called community spirit in adverse circumstances, it's called Benefit Street. I'm going to get you 50 feet. Nah, nah, that's on me, that is. A lot of people slapping me in the street, people saying that I'm an inspiration. <laughs> Well, the programme has even been discussed in the Commons this week with the Work and Pension Secretary, Ian Duncan-Smith. Get more people back to work to end these abuses. The villain of the piece isn't the people, the villain is the system. Many people in our country have multiple disadvantages and problems where you need help to help to get people out of uh, that poverty and benefit dependencies. The same more CV, not many qualifications. Thousands and thousands of people done. getting laid off work. Watch. I haven't said that I've not been able to work for six years, no. The past two years since my mum passed away, yeah. I've, been, I've been suffering from depression. And do you now believe that you could hold down a job? When you were saying that you would like to be an MP, was that sincere? No, it wasn't. I mean, who'd want, <laughs> no, who'd want to be an MP? <laughs> do MPs actually work? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, we'll come back to you in a second. Alison Pearson, um, from The Telegraph, uh, you wrote an article, all of you guys here have written different articles, as so many people have, uh, about Benefit Street. You wrote an article in which you were critical uh, of D. Alison, what was your point? Well, I'd like to say, first of all, that I think the Conservative front bench is very much looking for a lot more women, Dee, so I think you could perhaps <laughs> revise, because Dee's coming very much into line on Conservative thinking on um, benefits, I think. Um, I was making many points. One point was that I didn't think that the, the residents of Benefit Streets were claiming anything more or worse than the bankers who were awarding themselves bonuses. Um, one point. Po point two was that you said that you'd been on disability allowance for depression. Now, when I look at the woman on the screen, a one-woman citizens' advice bureau, full of energy, laughter and so on, I don't see the classic symptoms of clinical depression. To be honest. So are you sorry, are you saying that she's gaming the system? Uh, are you saying she's lying? Uh, I was just a bit surprised, and I do know yeah. that when they've just got people yeah. off disability living allowance onto the new yeah. allowance, it's a fact, Richard, that 878,000 no. people who are claiming the benefit have not okay. reapplied. For what it. are you saying about D? Just be clear with me. What are you saying about D? I'm just saying that a lot of people watching the programme were very, would have been very surprised to think that was a person suffering from depression. D, to there, be might, D, there, well, D there might be a point here, which is. We watch you on that show and you are full of energy and you're this, yeah. this mother to the street and you look after people and there's that moving scene where fungi wanted to meet his son and you washed his clothes and you woke him up at 8.30 in the morning. Yeah. You have a lot of energy and I guess some people will look at that and say, she can work, why isn't she working? They would, I totally agree with you, but obviously that is little snip bits. It's not me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. OK, OK. Uh, Douglas Murray. Um, from the spectator, uh, do you think, in general terms, I mean, Alison is alluding there, I think, to, to people gaming the system. When we look at why people are on benefits long term, why they're long term unemployed, this is a point that actually Dee was also making at the end of that film that we saw there. She was saying it's the government's fault. Mm. Is it the government's fault or is it down to individuals? Well, who, are, who, are, who are milking it. I'd say quite clearly a, a bit of both. It, there's, yeah. It's undeniable, I, I think, and, and uh, Dee made this point in Spectator yeah. last week in her diary, that, okay. uh, that there is a, a problem in the system which she is caught... Ralph is fine. Ralph is fine. Dee and many other contributors to the series are here yeah. and talking about the series and the positive effect that, they've, yeah. that, that it's had on them and the way that it's opened up the issues that they all face in their okay. life is testament mm. to the yeah. fact that that's not entirely true. And very quickly, Richard McCarroll, you run the company that made the show. You wanted to come in there? Yeah, I mean, I actually think we should be very proud of the series. I mean, yeah. we, you know, Channel 4, <laughs> Channel 4, which was set up as a public service broadcast and has been criticised for not doing serious issues, um, it's done a serious documentary series. We're here live tonight, and lots of people are watching it, and young people are watching it. Supposedly, okay. you don't care about Just political and serious issues. And, and, so. and on that point, on the serious issues and, and, and the politics <coughs> of it, has the reaction to this show kind of changed the game at all? I mean, do you think, will this have an impact uh, on policy, ultimately? Has it changed the public's attitude towards benefits and to welfare? Has it had, a, for one of the better phrase, a real-world impact? I mean, indeed, got a, a smack on. Yeah. Yeah. Has there been a debate about this now? Yes, you have. You succeeded in getting a debate. I, I, I think you should have not called it benefits, you should have called it community you. street, exactly. whatever you want to call it. But you particularly no, went down an avenue of the, benef of the benefit side. 
as it moved on, you then stigmatised a whole group of people, I, I, I think, which was fundamentally it... wrong. Mike, but, Mike, answer my question. But, 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 90% of the people who reacted you know positively. I mean, yeah, I don't oh, know figures, do I? But at the end of the day, in. you spent 18 months up to two years, you filmed people that were working, you filmed old age pensioners, you came to parties, filmed open days, community spirit, Bang! Two weeks, Benefit Street, okay. five of us. I think there are two uh, things that it has changed the debate about. Yes, go on. Actually, the, the first is, is the point about if you've not got the basic skills you need to be able to get in a job, the state should help you get them. I mean, you should have got them through school, of course. We did. Some, we I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you particularly. I, I think we, we, we should be trying to make sure that, ev that nobody... We, sorry, Lady, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Department of Work yes. and Pension. I'm trying to. Yes. I'm trying to. Wait, wait. All right, all right. I'm trying to. I think you and I would agree on this point. Is the point I'm trying to make, which is that you actually wait. have to make sure that people can read and write, that okay. they're able to, that they're able to do the basics. We will, we will come to you. We will come to you. If everyone shouts at once, we can't hear anyone. Let's just come over here. Let, no, John, wait, John, please wait. Mehdi Hassan. Just on this political point, yeah. has it changed the game at all? Has it changed the debate? I think in the it's country? made it much harder uh, yeah. for people to try and tell the truth about what's happening uh, to yeah. people on benefits. There are half a million yeah. people in this country, the sixth richest country in the world, going to food banks to get food because of benefit yeah. changes that have come in over the last few years. And I'm yeah. delighted to hear Mike Penning uh, make some very good points about yeah. people being stigmatised. But unfortunately, yeah. too many of his colleagues in government I... do similar stigmatisation. Let me say this, by the way. People on... According to our numbers. It's 350,000 people who use food banks last year. Well, according year to, to Trussell Trust, it's half a million. They're the biggest food bank in the country. Don't, don't but, worry. Hello and welcome back to Benefits Britain. We are live in Birmingham on Channel 4, which is a stone's throw from James Turner Street. Uh, we said it would be quite a rowdy debate. Uh, it certainly has been. We have people from uh, James Turner Street here with us tonight. We have programme makers, columnists from left and right, uh, a minister and his opposite number as well. Um, we've had a lot of people shouting out points. We haven't always been able to hear what everyone's been saying. So let's just take a few. Put your hand up if you'd like to say something, which I imagine is going to be uh, quite a lot of you. Indeed it is. Let's go to the... Yes, the gentleman there in the glasses. Tell us your name. Uh, Anthony Collins. OK, Anthony, what's your point? Uh, say about increasing the minimum wage, but that is only going to harm the small businesses in this country, the backbone of this country. What we need is to reduce the cost of living, which leads to another question. Why is this the only country in the world where diesel is more expensive than okay. petrol? When diesel is the core Anthony, ingredient... Anthony, if I may say something, that's slightly off topic. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we, no, let, let's yeah. collate a few points. Uh, the, the latest figures over the weekend showed that 14,000 people might lose their job if, it, if uh, minimum wage went up to seven quid. But let's take a point from a gentleman here. I know you've been keen to get in. Tell me your name. I'm Councillor Chamon Lal, yeah. the, the councillor for the ward where James Turner Street uh, yes. was made. Yeah. What yeah. Raisins, uh, Chris has said the right thing. What are the residents who are not on benefits? The pensioners, the working people. Why aren't they in the audience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only have the people here who took taken part in the in the in the program. The, the rest of the street has been stigmatised. The area has represented been lost. People lost the the, okay. the values in property. Okay. So what I, I think Channel Four and Love Productions or Party to uh, my residents but, uh, but, and they they made a million of profit on uh, this on this on the series. They need to put some money back to and compensate by right. residents. OK. We do have, we have a wide range of people in the audience. It's mostly people not from the show that are singing in the audience. A lot of these are people who are, uh, are local to Birmingham. Uh, gentlemen there, yes. Hello, tell me your name. Hi, my name is Dotton. Hi, tell us your and, point, uh, My argument is, from the show, uh, a lot of the benefits go towards boozing and drinking and smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Why not give food stamps, something that will help them health-wise? You know, um, it just doesn't make sense giving the money out and all on drugs, all on alcohol. OK. So if you think... Did anyone think... Did anyone think, watching that show, did anyone at all think that life on benefits looked at all cushy? Of course from what would. they saw? It looks great. It looks like a right bundle of laughs. Did it go on? Do you expand that point? That's how you think it, it came across? Like, well, of course it does. It looks like oh. we're having a great... You know, great crack. Uh.